Ah, uh, we love some overnight breaking news in college football. Normally, conference realignment rumors and reports are saved for the summer months and the offseason, not entering week three of a college football campaign. But that did not slow down the Pac-12, a multi-phase plan, not a concept of a plan, but a true plan of expansion and realignment. Reports last night from Yahoo Sports, Ross Dellinger, and others that the Pac-12 is intending to add Boise State, Colorado State, Fresno State, San Diego State to its conference starting in 2026 alongside Oregon State in Washington State. Again, Donnie Wright's side, long a champion of the Conference of Champions, has to be thrilled on this Thursday morning. And, and let's understand this, Ben, like, because over the years, right, the Pac-12 was what? The Pac-10? Was there ever, ever a different name before that was like the Pac-8? I don't even know at that Pac point. Eight. The reason I'm getting behind yeah. this is. Pac-8, yeah, Pac-10, like, Pac-12. Yeah. Why, like, why are we still, I understand, like, the Pac-12 shouldn't be in existence anymore. It should be a new conference with a new name. It's disrespectful to the old conference. But <laughs> why is it still the Pac-12 if we're not going to have 12 teams? Do you know what I Like, this right. doesn't make any, well, nothing is making sense at this point now. No. Well, nothing is making sense. We also heard during Big 12 media days in July in Las Vegas that they were interested in naming their conference the All-State Big 12 or the Big 12 All-State Conference to bring in licensing rights and money. That's the name of college football. How can you generate all the revenue as possible? But I will say, although as of this moment, it is the Pac-6, half of the number of 12, there is still a chance based on the multi-phase plan to realign and rebuild that once glorious conference out on the West Coast to maybe add more. And in fact, DRS, they need to add at least two more programs and member institutions if they want to be considered an FBS conference. You need at least eight member schools to even be considered an FBS conference. And if they try to get back into the power conference idea, that remains a different story for a different time. But they still would need two schools starting in 2026 to even have a full eight to be considered a true member league around the country. Yeah, what, are, what were the two teams that were left? It was like Oregon State and Washington State. Why did they just go to the Mountain West? Correct. Like, why are we forming a new conference with those two bum teams anyway and adding six to seven more bum teams and try to play it off as the Pac-12 here at this point? That's what's getting me upset. If you would have told me today right. they're going to a new conference and just call it, I don't know, the Northwestern Nine. I'm like, hey, you know what? That's pretty cool. Okay, they got a new set Ooh. here. Let's see what Ooh. they can do. But using that Pac-12 when they don't even have 12 teams, and it's right. such a disgraceful you know, appearance on these teams compared to yeah. what the Pac-12 mm -hmm. actually was, that's what gets me riled up at this point. And then also, I know it's yeah. going to come down the line too. Oh, well, we the Pac-12, we just took that over, so we should be a Power 5 conference right off the bat here. Stop the madness. This conference stinks. So... I'm not going to disparage the great name of some very proud you football should. programs like Boise State. You're a Big Ten guy. State, Let it Colorado rip. State. Let it rip. Well, here's Let it rip. you got a feel for the Pac-12. And the reason they are trying to no, still have don't. that branding, we all forget DRS that over a decade ago, 2012, 2013, 2014, before Larry Scott idiotically tried to build up a network that never had distribution, the Pac-12 had the best TV deal in the country. The Pac-12 was seen like the Big Ten and the SEC now as one of the bigger leagues among the Power Five. So they're trying to keep over 100 years of legacy and tradition with that branding. But it is going to be costly if these reports are correct. We are supposed to get some official announcements within the next hour early out there in the Mountain Time Zone and on the West Coast. Because those Mountain West schools would have to pay the league $17 million in an exit fee. And on top of that, somewhere in the ballpark of 10 to $12 million because of the scheduling alliance that is happening this year between the Pac-2, that's Oregon State and Wazoo, and the Mountain West that has allowed the Beavs and the Cougs to play six of the member schools from the Mountain West. There ain't no loyalty, DRS, or even friendships when it comes to college football. No, there's not. Now, you know me, Ben. I like to equate things to other sports here, but I'm going to equate the Pac-12 here to real life. You know, Mrs. DRS wants to leave Mr. DRS. Oh. She's, not taking, Never she's not taking that name. I'm stripping it. That name is going right back, baby. 
You know what I mean? Like, that's this is how we have to sort of look at these things. You can't take the Pac-12 away from man. the former Pac-12. You want to leave yeah. me, my wife, and you want to take my name? Taking it back. Stop it. I miss, to have I, I miss you, man. I miss you, man. Yeah. Literally two Hot days sport. is too long to be apart Oof. from each other. Maybe yeah. she would be Mrs. Rye side? No tea? Mm. Mrs. Rye side? Mm. We'll see about that. I mean, Maybe that's a different it's story. It's not happening. Yeah. There are li- exclusive licensing agreements. When you walk down yeah. that aisle, you make that licensing agreement with that name. Right. You have a right to snatch it back if that person does not want to stay with that licensing agreement. Same thing with the Pac-12. Can't use it. Can't right. use it. I appreciate that you would take back right side and maybe not Ooh. another name like Seymour, but whatever. Mm. Anyway, yeah. as we go around some other Trade college marks. football news, Donnie, we're going to have about a minute and 15 seconds after I tee this up for mm. your unfiltered okay. thoughts. Michigan announces head coach Jerome Moore has officially <laughs> oh, signed his contract. Go. <laughs> Why was the man working without a contract at this point? And Michigan, if he wasn't under contract, that's the perfect time to fire him after that game. No loss, no harm. You go out and find a new coach at this point. Now, granted, how did this even how did he even operate as the head coach without a con what a, I'm missing something big here where he finally signed his name on that contract. My God, like, how did that even happen? The minute Harbaugh left, that should have been in gear, ready to go, signed, sealed, and delivered. The man didn't have a contract, and my goodness, after a half horrible loss, then you get your new contract. It's kind of crazy world right now, Ben. It really is. Handshake agreement, I guess, some back pay being installed into the fine lines of that contractual deal. All the leverage, though, from Sharon's side after building up what he did, filling in for Jim Harbaugh in the adversity filled, brought on by themselves season last year for the Wolverines, gone. As the jokes Mm. were made, as Donnie said right before we hit the break, he ran to the table and signed that with a pen very, very quickly after getting dismantled and dominated inside the big house in the areas where Sharon Moore is at his best in the trenches by Texas on Saturday afternoon. We're off to a flying start. College football week number three on the horizon and starts with a banger tonight in the Lone Star State between Texas State and Arizona State. ASU now a member of the Big 12. Texas State a Sun Belt team. But there's a lot of realignment happening currently in college football. Donnie made official by the four schools that were reported to join the Pac-12 overnight. Boise State, Fresno State, Colorado State, San Diego State. All four schools coming out with the official announcement on this Thursday morning within the last 25 minutes or so. The Pac-12 is now six, and they are adding, starting in 2026, Boise State, Colorado State, Fresno State, San Diego State to join Oregon State and Washington State. The Pac-12, to Donnie's delight, has a little bit of life. And the first thing they need to do, Ben, they got to go to San Francisco, get like, what, three, four million, five million dollars a month in rent fees there. You got to pay their new commission an extremely high amount of money because it worked so well for the Pac-12 last time around. Just don't make those mistakes here at this point now. Don't be frivolous with your money. I still don't think this conference is going to last at this point, but at least you have a clean slate at this point. But you remember all that stuff, Ben, where it's like, hey, look, we look at the SEC where they're at. We look at the ACC and the Pac-12 out here. Those expenditures out here. And that company, American Express, boy, they were running up tabs out there in the Pac-12. Yeah, they certainly were. A lot of bad decisions that plagued this Mm. once proud conference by former Commissioner Larry Scott. George Klievkoff is the guy now. Also didn't have the greatest foresight in the two years since he took the job to see the collapse (laughs) of his conference. But they pull themselves up by their bootstraps out there on the West Coast. They would still need two more member institutions to add on to the group of six to be considered a true FBS conference by the Football Bowl subdivision. We shall see. Anyway, let's get to week number three and some more key matchups on the horizon. We'll talk Thursday in Friday night a little bit later on in the show. Donnie, there's an argument the two of the best games happen on this Thursday and Friday night of this week three slate. Maybe not the best you'll see all Saturday long for all season long in college football, but a marquee matchup, at least based on program brand in Madison, Wisconsin, 
bright and early on Saturday. Alabama makes the trip up north to the great state of Wisconsin to take on the Badgers inside Camp Randall. The Crimson Tide, 16 and a half point road favorite in this matchup against the Badgers. Total stands at 49 and a uh, hook. The Tide rolls north. What do you like in this game? I think Alabama can, has a chance to roll in this. Now, the reason I bring that up is Tyler Van Dyke, no stranger to my television set. Uh, he used to be Tyler Van boy. Dimes down for the University of Miami. Yeah. Here's the issue, Ben. Through two games, he's thrown for 406 yards, but the key indicator, only one touchdown pass. You're not just going to line up and play smash mouth football against an SEC opponent. You're going to have to open it up. And for me, early in his career, Tyler Van Dyke was very good. Like, wow, uh, maybe Miami found something. What they found last year was falling off of a cliff because of how bad that quarterback played play was he's now going to step up in competition and also the two wins for wisconsin not all that impressive to me no roll and alabama rolling and absolutely smash wisconsin on their home field listen i want to like wisconsin in this spot i want to think that one of the best home atmospheres in college football camp randall and the drump around boys will be having a good day on saturday i just don't see it based on what we have seen out of the Badgers this year so far in two games and last year in year number one under Luke Fickle. Wisconsin is 0-2 against the spread this season, favored by at least Mm -hmm. 18 and a half points in its opener against Western Michigan and last week against FCS opponent, opponent in South Dakota. Wisconsin has only scored 28 points at max throughout their two games this season. Last year, averaging 23 and a half points per game in what was supposed to be the Dairy Raid. A new offensive coordinator, Phil Longo, that made North Carolina one of the most dynamic offenses in all of college football. Last year, DRS averaging 23 and a half points per game, stagnant on that side of the football. It was the first time in the last decade the Badgers had averaged less than 24 points per game, and often time in the last 10 seasons, more than 30 points per game but that was a pro style offense under Paul Christ where the big hog mollies up front would dominate in the trenches I thought it would take maybe a season to adapt to this much more high powered free flowing dairy raid offense under Phil Longo and I thought Tyler Van Dyke being the veteran would be the guy to Mm. guide Luke Fickle and the Badgers to a better season hasn't happened And then earlier this week, we heard from Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator in Wisconsin, somebody that follows me on Twitter, big fan of Longo and what he does. He was asked about why the offense has been stale so far, and he said something along the lines of, I'm here to please Coach Fickle. Not necessarily why his offensive scheme is working. And Donnie, when you look at this Wisconsin football program, the Badgers have had a winning record each and every year since 2001 when all was said and done they have the third longest bowl game appearance streak in the country at 22 straight years only behind Georgia who has 27 and Oklahoma who has 25 but the Badgers have not won double digit games since 2019 that used to be the standard in Madison has not been the case here I think it's going to be very tough sledding for this Wisconsin team offensively to be able to even contain defensively what Jalen Milrow and the Tide are going to present on Saturday inside Camp Randall. Yeah, and it does take some time because you're right. Wisconsin was always built on that dominant running game. And I remember under Barry Alvarez, the thing I used to get a kick out of was, you know, I can go out and get the best running back in the country because I can promise them 40-plus touches in every single ball game all throughout their career. And that was appealing to a lot of kids. That's not as appealing anymore because the running game is not appealing across college football. That's not necessarily how you win football games anymore. So there will be some growing pains as you step into the new millennium on offense for Wisconsin. But I did hear this. Like, you know me, Ben. I'm well-connected yeah. in the state of Wisconsin. And I heard you are. through an SIB out that. there that they are going to play jump around at the first TV timeout just to make sure there's still people in the audience out there watching and enjoying the football game. Because if they play it at, what, the end of the third quarter, what are we jumping around to? 42-3 to three Alabama? Tough scene up there, Ben. Tough scene. Play it early. Play yeah. it before the yeah. action even mm-hmm. happens. Smart move. For sure. Love the S idea. Of Donnie Good and – yep, yep. Donnie and his sources knows all about it. Tyler Van Dyke will always remember 2021 in Miami mm. when he oh, had a good. great season. It has not been great so far. 
His only averaging right now, DRS, somewhere around the 200-yard marker. He had 192 mm. in the opener against the Broncos of Western Michigan, 214 yards against South Dakota. As you mentioned, just one touchdown in two games. Wisconsin has been to the red zone 10 times this year, only mm. five touchdowns all on the ground. SEC showdown and an SEC opener for the Bayou Bengals of LSU, but not for South Carolina. The Gamecocks last week on the road in Lexington, knocking off Kentucky 30-1-6 yeah. outright as the underdog against the Cats. It should be an electric environment inside williams Bryce, where right now LSU booked is just shy of a touchdown favorite in Columbia. Sands, the sandstorm going to be blasting, Ben. Have you ever get down to South Carolina no and watch the uh, opening? I mean, I it would be pretty good to watch it play out. The crowd will be there. And also for LSU, they dropped their game opening night, which I thought they should have won, but USC had a very good night. And then game number two for LSU, which is typically one of those Brian Kelly's 65 nothing shots. You see that final score and say, maybe not as dominant as we were in the past, but Nussmeyer, 610 mm. yards on the season, eight touchdowns and one interception. It'll be interesting to see how that defense holds up for South Carolina, because as you said, like not really paying all that much attention to South Carolina. That's still an eye-opening number to route Kentucky on the road and play that good a defense. Maybe they can hang around. Yeah. Maybe there's something to take in the points in this game with South Carolina at home. South Carolina under Shane Beamer in SEC play. 13-12 and 12 now against the spread, winning outright 31-6 to six as a nine-and-a-half-point dog last week in Lexington. Held the catch to 44 passing yards. Yeah. And won a game with only putting up 252 yards of total offense themselves. 